Hello and welcome to the Overflow Podcast. My name is Craig Booker. The title of this episode is Flossing Saved My Life. A lot of the material for this week's episode was inspired by Craig Rochelle's book, The Power to Change, Mastering the Habits That Matter Most. Note, I will talk a lot about mental health, but please note this is not a substitute for therapy or mental health care. I am not a counselor or physician. If you need help with mental health challenges, please find a qualified mental health professional. See, last week we talked about change your life, change your habits. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about flossing save my life. So last week we were talking about our habits and we did an exercise to examine our daily routine, uh, looking at the habits that we do every day that we probably don't think about to see if we need to make any adjustments or before we try to add new strategic habits to our routines. This week, we're talking about flossing saved my life. Craig Rochelle in his book in this chapter goes on to talk about how early on, I, I think he says for like 20 years, he started a new habit every year, like one new habit. And at the very beginning, the first habit that he started was flossing. He absolutely hated flossing. So he figured that if he can floss on a regular basis and do something that he hates, um, then anything else that came along had to be easier than flossing. That is where that title comes from. Uh, And he, he goes through and tells a story, kind of like a progression of how he started flossing and then from flossing he started other habits and just how the progression of starting a small thing like flossing every day it resulted in saving his life that's where the title comes from life-changing principles that he mentions at the beginning of this chapter are never underestimate how god can start something big through one small habit the small things that no one sees can lead to big results everyone wants. And success happens not by accident, but by habits. On the first one, the never underestimate how God can start something big through one small habit. This main story that he talks about is the story of Daniel praying. And he goes on and kind of tells that story of how he prayed three times a day and how that ultimately set the course for Daniel's life. And so that was the the one small habit that Daniel did that changed his life. All right. And the quote from Craig Rochelle, hope doesn't change your life, habits do, specifically mastering the habits that matter most. Why is this good news? Because you are not a victim of your circumstances, because you don't need something big to magically happen. If you want something big to happen, start small. Because you don't have to keep helplessly hoping for change. You can start and maintain habits that will lead to change. If you'll notice, a lot of this overlaps previous chapters. So it's all kind of coming, starting to come together. In this next part, we, you know, we talked about discipline. And we talked about you are disciplined. A lot of us, we talked about how a lot of us don't see ourselves as disciplined people because of how we look at discipline. For now... Realize you are disciplined and have been establishing new habits your whole life. We're now going to get intentional with what habits we want to start. We're going to get intentional with what habits we need to stop. So hopefully you can see how this is starting to come together. If we look at last episode where we were examining our routine to identify habits that we already do each day, that should allow you to see things that maybe you want to stop or maybe things that you want to start by doing that exercise from last episode. So if you haven't done that, I would encourage you to go back to that episode, go through that exercise. By doing that, you'll be able to look at things either that you need to start or you need to stop in order to achieve your goal. Ideally, we only want to start one new habit at a time because we're making such large changes to our routine that we want to do everything we can to set ourselves up for success. You know, what Craig Rochelle recommends in his book is not to start more than one new habit at a time. All right. So we're kind of layering all these different exercises that we've done in in past episodes, and we're kind of putting them all together now. You know, we can look at our daily routine. We can look at 
like the person that the who or the person we want to become and we can look at things we need to stop or we need to start in order to become that person you know don't feel like you had to have done all of this or you're all of a sudden lost the good thing is is that now it's all online on the overflow website so if there's a piece of this that you missed if there's something that you really need to go back and revisit you can absolutely do so now that we've done some of this hard work and gone through a lot of these exercises we can start piecing together how we implement change we're now going like i said we're now going to get intentional with what habits we want to start and what we need to stop uh, and it says choosing the right habits will change your life habits not hope changing your habits change your life so one reason why this is really encouraging for mental health, this this is how it really comes in to practical application for mental health, is a lot of times, and it just doesn't apply to every part of mental health, but a lot of times when you have a diagnosis, you feel kind of trapped. You feel like you're a victim of your circumstances because, you know, an event has happened or something happened to trigger your condition and you feel somewhat like helpless uh, because all of a sudden you have this new condition and maybe you can't function, right? The things that you used to do, you can't do anymore, or it seems like you can't do them anymore. So there's this, this feeling, at least in my experience, there's this feeling of helplessness that you're just stuck with what your circumstances gave you. And in in my experience going to professionals doctors counselors i didn't get the sense that there was a lot of hope to change any of this it, it, you know number point number 2 there uh, you know you don't need something big to magically happen i felt like a miracle needed to happen for my situation to change i didn't feel like i could do anything to impact what had happened my circumstances how i was feeling other than taking medication. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with medication. I'm just saying that's the only thing I felt like I could do. Or I would get the, the recommendation by a doctor, well, why don't you exercise? You know, that is something I could do. But for me, that was at the time when I'm, the way that I was feeling, the anxiety that I was feeling, at points, going outside was a big challenge for me, just to go outside. And yes, I could exercise indoors, that's true. But all of the stuff that I would picture doing to exercise involved going outside. And at the time, I just didn't feel like that was something I could do to impact my situation. And so I felt a bit of hopelessness and I felt a little bit like I was a victim of my circumstances. And how did I end up here? And where was God in all of this? Why this is important to people with anxiety, depression, you know, different forms of mental illness or mental challenges is that we can impact our situation. I'm not saying that you can heal yourself, that you'll magically have everything disappear and you'll be better and back to where you were before all this happened. What I'm saying is you can impact it. And sometimes that comes through our perspective. And if, if, that's, if that is what you can do to change where you're at, perspective is a big deal. It can change you from being a miserable person to a joyful person, and that will change your life. Okay, so it, it at the very least, if you the only thing that you're able to change is your perspective, realize that's a big deal. There's other things that we can change, like the small little changes that improve little parts of our life. And when you you know when you make all these small little changes over time, when you look back at your life, you really did make a big improvement, like whether it's, you know, improving your sleep, whether it's through like the things that you're eating or not eating anymore, whether it's you're adding a, a routine like exercising to help you kind of process some of the stress that you feel. You know, the importance here is, you know, I think I've mentioned this at, at some time is I always thought that improvement meant either my condition had to completely disappear and I was suddenly healed of everything in order to make a change. And that's just not true. I mean, that definitely would do it. But 
what I'm saying is it could be your perspective. It could be you make little changes to your routine, like your sleep, exercise level, maybe what you eat, these little things that when when they you start doing them, they make small improvements. When you put them together, they really make a difference. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden, like once you make these improvements, your mental health challenges are gone. It's just you're learning to better cope with your circumstances and what you're experiencing. And that really sets you up for success in the future because say, you know, after you do all these changes, your your anxiety or depression really gets a lot better and you're feeling so much better. And that prepares you for the future when an event um, happens, something traumatic comes into your life, you can better cope with whatever comes your way because you've done all that work to set yourself up for the future. We have an exercise and it says, because we're talking about mastering the habits that matter most, what is the first habit you can establish that could lead to your biggest win? What is the first habit you you can establish that could lead to your biggest win? In his book, Craig Rochelle is talking about how flossing, the small habit of flossing, led to so much positive change in his life. And so likewise, Uh, I believe that we all have something like that that could lead to positive change in our life. It's identifying that first habit um, that we can establish to lead to our biggest win. He goes on to talk about how the actual habit of flossing helped him to realize he is a disciplined person. That's a common struggle for many people is not believing that we're disciplined. And that, you know, Adding that one habit of flossing helped him believe that he's a disciplined person. And so he kind of stacks that on top of, okay, because he flosses, he's disciplined. He goes to bed early so he can get up early. He's a disciplined person. And so these small things start to stack and help you to believe the things that the truths that you need to believe to accomplish your goal. And so, you know, whether that is, you know, going to bed at a certain time, whether that is getting up at a certain time, um, it could be a very small habit that could lead to your overall goal. All right. So principle here is never underestimate how God can start something big through one small habit. The small things that no one sees can lead to the big results everyone wants. Success happens not by accident, but by habits. Uh, Luke 16.10 of the New Living Translation says, if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. That's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes.